Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to Bethel's Easter worship service. Uh, through history, this has been the big greeting on Easter morning. So when we do the mutual greeting, uh, we're going to add in that as we say it to each other, you know, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Uh, just before this service, uh, if you got the order of worship and if you follow the videos beforehand, you notice the video with the Apostles' Creed. And it was a beautiful video created by Global Leadership Network. Uh, and it just reminds us that on this day especially, that we are members of a global, worldwide church. Uh, a church that is not only through, through time and space, but, but is also connected with heaven as well. Uh, it is a church victorious, but also a church that is still militant, a church, uh, we would say, that is still engaged in, in expanding the kingdom and, and in doing God's kingdom work here. And Easter reminds us that Jesus is king, Jesus is a victor, and that no matter what is going on in the world today, you know, it's going to be okay. Uh, because God is in control. Uh, and Jesus defeated uh, not only his enemies, but he defeated death itself. So you've come across uh, Bethel Church here in Lacombe. If you are a guest uh, watching this morning, welcome. And we pray that you will encounter Christ this morning as we worship and praise him. Uh, we are a church who who follows Jesus as best we can. We love each other. We serve our community. Even in times like this, uh, our deacons and our different ministries are, are doing so many things and connecting with our community and serving. And we love talking about Jesus as well. So let's begin our worship by, um, by praying. So if you have an order of worship with you, follow along. If you don't, uh, let's come to our Lord in prayer. God of life, we praise you for the miracle of Easter. We pray for great joy for ourselves and for all who come to worship today to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. But we pray especially for those who will join us for worship and whose lives are filled with pain, loss, or deep sadness. Lord, may they sense how the resurrection is a source of great hope still today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And our call to worship is, is, a, is a joint call to worship. So, so I will invite you to turn and we shall do this together. So this is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen we say together, hallelujah. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never put it out. We say together, hallelujah. And this is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. And again, hallelujah. Christ is our peace the indestructible peace we now share with each other, and we say together, hallelujah. And God's greeting is also, we do it together. So grace and peace from Jesus Christ our Lord, and we offer it to, to each other and also with you. So sisters and brothers in Christ, on this most holy day, when our Savior Jesus Christ passed from death to life, we gather with the church throughout the world in vigil and prayer. So let's say it together, this is the Passover of Jesus Christ. Through light and the word, through water and the bread and wine, we recall Christ's death and resurrection. We share Christ's triumph over sin and death. With invincible hope, we await Christ's coming again. Hear the word of the Lord. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, 
and the darkness has not overcome it. So I invite you to turn to those you are worshiping with and offer them that Easter greeting, Christ is risen, and then respond, he is risen indeed. So Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This is the most joyous day of the church uh, celebration. We often look at uh, Christmas as being the high holy day, uh, but this is a day where, where Jesus has, uh, has been risen from the dead. He offers new life and he offers us hope. Hope in, in, in certainty that no matter what is going on in life today, uh, that Jesus can overcome it. So we have a hymn of joy. Now we're not going to sing it, but instead we'll, we'll sing it. And again, it's a litany that we do together. So rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing, choirs of angels. Exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ our King has risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. And we say together, rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing, choir of angels. Jesus Christ our King is risen. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered. Glory fills you. Darkness vanishes forever. And together, rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing, choir of angels. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Rejoice, O Mother Church. Exult in glory. The risen Savior shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. And together, rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing choirs of angels. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Amen. I love that word, amen. It means, so let it be. And we confess our faith. And our faith is, is something that is certain. It's something we have no doubts about. And we'll reflect on that in the sermon as well. The, the certainty, the, the reason why we can be certain of our faith. Of why uh, that Jesus has risen from the dead. But we take this Easter confession of faith. And again... We do it back and forth together. So we confess, Christ died for all, in order that they who are alive may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Together, thanks be to God, who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If then any are in Christ, they are a new creation. The former things have passed away. Behold, they're made new. Together, thanks be to God, who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. For God, who commanded light to shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give enlightenment concerning the knowledge of the glory of God shining on the face of Christ Jesus. And together, thanks be to God, who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. And together, thanks be to God, who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Walked in as children of light. For the fruit of the light is in all goodness and justice and truth. And test what is well pleasing to God. And together thanks be to God. Who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. For if we live, ah, we live to the Lord. For if we die, we die to the Lord. Together, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. 
You were buried together with Christ in baptism, and in him also you rose again through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Together, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? And together, thanks be to God, who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And part of, part of the wonder of Easter, part of the greatness of Easter, is that we can, we can pray. We can pray in certainty that our Lord is alive, and we can pray certain that he hears and listens and responds as well. Our Lord is alive, and he has the victory. So let's come to our Lord in our Easter prayer. We worship you, Jesus, our Savior. You have conquered death by your cross. You are the stone rejected by the builders. You have become the cornerstone. And we ask you to make all of us living stones in your church. We pray to you for Christians. May they live in the joy of the resurrection and be a visible sign of your presence by their mutual love. We pray to you for the leaders of your church as they celebrate your resurrection with all your servants. May they be strengthened for your service. We think especially of the elders and deacons here in Bethel, but we also think of all the leaders in our denomination and various ministries as they seek, even in this time, to still share this glorious news of resurrection. We pray to you for the leaders of the nations. Lord, we pray that they may serve as servants of justice and peace. Lord, give them wisdom, courage, and perseverance in such a time as this. And Lord, we pray to you for all who are suffering from illness, grief, old age, exile. Lord, there are so many needs now uh, and Lord, we take time just to lift them up to you, a moment of silence. And we give thanks for all those who are are working so hard to serve, to serve in, in places where, where they are placing their health on the line. We think of especially the doctors and nurses. We pray that you will give them strength and endurance, but also peace and calmness of heart. We think of those who are serving us in the stores, those who are, are serving on the farms and, and in all the businesses that are still open. Oh Lord, every business, every, everyone is being affected by this. So Lord, there are again so many prayers that we offer and you know them. You know the words that are on our tongue even before we speak them. So we ask at a time like this, May your resurrection be a source of comfort and aid for us all. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's Easter. So of course for Easter you're going to have a, a children's message that's going to focus on new life, on, on resurrection and, and all that, but... Children's messages are really meant to have all the kids kind of sitting here. So, 
You know, if you're going to do an Easter message with things like eggs or, or stuff, I've got some beautiful eggs that have been decorated uh, from different parts of the world. And, and they all point to new life and they point to hope. Um, but it's kind of hard to do a, an Easter message from, from that. So we have these beautiful flowers here. Now, normally for Easter, you would have lilies, but apparently lilies are a little hard to come by. So, so we have mums, and, and mums are always good because they remind us of our mums and how much they love us. But they all point to, to different things. So, so we have white mums. They're beautiful, they're fresh, they smell wonderful. Mm, if you have some at home, whether lilies or, or mums, you know, just... Just hold them, just smell them, and just wonder at, at how pure and white and green, and they remind us of, of, of purity. And you know, when Jesus rose from the grave, that was a sign to, to the world that God accepted Jesus' sacrifice on Good Friday on the cross, that he's washed our souls and our hearts and, and wash them clean from sin makes us pure as well. Now, a lot of these plants, for them, in, for them to grow, they, they start off as a bulb. And it's kind of a, an ugly bulbs and, and they're brown and they're all kind of wrinkly and everything else. And, and you put them in the ground and, and then you take care of them and you kind of uh, water them and... and, and and then, as the weather warms up, as the sun starts beating down and the snow begins to melt, out of that cold, dry earth, as the snow waters the ground, life begins to stir. And slowly, roots start coming out of that bulb that looked like it was dead, and they begin to kind of spread out and and then all of a sudden, you'll get a, a green sprout. And, and then it'll grow and grow and grow and grow until you have these beautiful flowers. And, and in a way, that's like our faith. Our, our faith starts like a little seed, is what Jesus says. But then you water it. And you water it by, by reading the Bible, by praying, by going to Sunday school and treasure seekers. Uh, the older kids, they, they grow their faith, they nurture it, they water it through, through gems and cadets and through young people. And, and the church, we nurture it by pouring into you, by teaching you and walking alongside you. And we grow. And we grow in our faith we grow stronger in, in our knowing that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, that he is risen from the dead, and that our sin is buried with Jesus as well, that we have new life. And now you might say, how do we have new life? You know, we're, we were born as babies and we only have this one life. But, but when Jesus talks about new life, he says, you know what? You put all the old stuff that you did wrong and that, that, that makes God unhappy and you put that behind you. That goes buried into the grave with Jesus. And the new life is, is that Holy Spirit that Jesus gives us. And we're going to celebrate that in 50 days on Pentecost. But, but then Jesus just works in our hearts and he works in our minds and, and he works in our lives so that we become more and more like him. And then we start helping each other to grow as well. Because we don't grow by ourselves. We always grow together. And that's what we celebrate on Easter is new life. We celebrate that our faith may start small and it may not even look pretty at first. Uh, but our faith, you know, as Jesus waters it, as the church waters it, as your parents water it, as, as you water each other's faith, helping each other to grow in knowing Jesus, you know, we come to a day where we, where we have yeah, fruit, where we bear beautiful flowers for, for Jesus. So let's just pray and give thanks for Easter that reminds us that yeah, that we have new life, 
that we have life that can be beautiful like the flowers because of all that Jesus has done. So let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for, for those seeds of faith that you plant in us. And then thank you for parents and for family and friends and church and your Holy Spirit that waters those seeds, that, that nourishes them so that they grow and grow and grow. And Lord, may, may we as individuals, but also may we as a church, may we be beautiful flowers, beautiful fruit for your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we come to the Easter story. And the Easter story that we're reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 28. We're going to look at the first 10 verses. Now, you can get your Bibles, uh, give you a moment, and I'm going to take a drink of water. Um, you may have, we're using the NIV, and I'm using the 2011 edition, but you may have an earlier edition. You may have a different version, uh, completely different, but that's okay. The story is, is told, and, and it may use slightly different words, but we know the message. So now it's Sunday morning. There's guards at the tomb because uh, the chief priests and the religious leaders were afraid that somebody was going to steal Jesus' body and then say that he's alive because they remembered that Jesus had taught that. Uh, and then Pilate says, yeah, I, I don't want any more trouble from you all. So I'll tell you what, I'll give you some guards. So now the sun is, is rising in the, in the east. And the women, well, let's just hear the story from, from Matthew. So after the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen just as he had said. Come. And see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid and yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him and, and clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word of the Lord. Father, we're here this morning. We're worshipping and celebrating the resurrection of your son the defeat of death and sin on the cross and in this resurrection. Lord, the, the prayers, the scripture that we've read, the worship that, that we've already engaged in, may that, may that shape us and form us more and more into who you've created us to be. And Lord, I pray that the words which will now be spoken, Lord, may they be your words and not mine. We pray this in the name of our, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So it's Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. That's how the church has greeted each other since, 
since that first Easter. But that first Easter wasn't a huge celebration at first. It comes after a, a Saturday. A, a Saturday, a, a Sabbath for, for the Jews where they mourned, where they were wondering, you know, we've invested our lives into Jesus. You know, we've been following him, we've been listening to him, and, and we had so much hope. Hope for the world that he was going to create, that he was going to bring. And now he's gone. What, what's left there for, for us? And yet, we, we have the opportunity to look back. And we know that, that since that first Good Friday, since that, that first Easter, the world has never been the same again. Everything has changed because of, because of Good Friday and because of Easter. The first Easter was a crazy kind of a, a, a day after a crazy kind of a weekend. Everyone's now waiting to see what's going to happen. Both enemies and friends of Jesus. And it's funny to me that as you read the story, the, the enemies are actually way more prepared for what's coming than than Jesus' friends are. You, you have the, the chief priests. They make sure that there's a guard set on the tomb, that, that the tomb is sealed. There's, there's a seal put on there so that if that seal is broken, then the people are in trouble because then they've disobeyed the government. And, and they're ready for something to happen. They're just not quite sure what. But at the same time, Jesus' friends, the disciples, the followers, they're hiding in, the, in a room behind locked doors. They're afraid. They're, they're afraid that, I'm not even quite sure what they're afraid of. But fear has just kind of gone deep into their hearts. Maybe they're afraid they're going to be persecuted. Maybe they're afraid they might have to die. But they sit there and they wait and they wonder. And now the Sabbath is over. Now they can work again. And, and two of the women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they, they head to the tomb. See, they had fo followed Joseph of Arimathea uh, after he had asked Pilate if he could take the body of Jesus and, and bury him. And, and Pilate, recognizing that this was a messed up situation and it should never have happened this way, he said yes. Certainly, take Jesus' body. You know, put him to rest in a tomb. And, and we can go back to the Old Testament, all kinds of prophecies and that about that. But, but the women followed Joseph. They wanted to know exactly where Jesus' body was. See, there was this whole preparation that they would do for a body. They would wash it and, and they would put spices on it and they would wrap it and they would... They would honor the body so that, so that the memories would be, would be good. The memories would be, the memories would be honored. And there's a sense then as well that through the spices and the smells and, and through the anointing that the death, death could be a little bit denied. Nobody wants to, nobody really wants to acknowledge death. So we do all these rituals to, to soften the grief. And that's, what, that's what's going on here as they head to the tomb. So the sun is peaking just above the horizon and, and they head off to, to see Jesus in the tomb.